Black right and left six long, tightens at right five thirty. It feels pretty strange to think of WRC9 as the beginning of the end. KT Racing have built up an ever-improving franchise over the last half decade, but there's now a looming end date for their time with the license. It somehow feels relevant to this year's game, and yet it actually doesn't make the blindest bit of difference when you think about it. This is still KT Racing trying to push their series that step closer to capturing all of the aspects of the World Rally Championship, and in truth, the most pressing concern will actually be trying to bridge the generational divide to support PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Of course, we didn't get to see the game running on those consoles, and WRC 9 is coming out well in advance of their release in September for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and PC. We got to go hands-on with the PC version, but you know, I installed the game to my SSD, so I guess that counts for something? The headline new features for WRC9 include some new locations, a new club system to allow fans to run their own online championships, and then in the months after release, with those next-gen versions looming, there's also the promise of additions to pre-existing rallies and a co-op co-driver mode. There's three new rallies in the game, as the 2020 WRC planned to return to Kenya, New Zealand and Japan, coming after extended periods off the calendar. They are a great trio of contrasting additions with the wide open terrain of Kenya up against the tight twisty mountain paths of New Zealand and the similarly tight and twisty roads of Japan. They have their own character and their own type of challenge to present to you. And then later this year, the Portuguese and Finnish rallies will both be getting some extra stages added into the mix. This is a big continuation of what has come before though, with the game hosting over 100 stages in total, many of which will have been found in previous games. Diving in with a gamepad, I thoroughly enjoyed visiting each of those new locations. That is, of course, once I'd taken my usual time to adjust to the mixture of daring do and caution that rallying requires. I found that the game was actually really quite easy to get under my fingers and thumbs. However, I also recognised some of the complaints that we had of the WRC 8 gamepad handling model. I'm nowhere near as analytical as Tom is, but I definitely got the same sense that there's still a tendency for those tank slappers that are a bit too easy to overcorrect and send you swivelling the other direction, and there's also some wacky collision physics that you might occasionally spot. It was a handling characteristic that was definitely accentuated for me on the grippier asphalt roads of Japan, and it was the tightness of that rally's roads that led to a number of collisions that made the car just look a bit too light as it spun and took off from the ground. WRC 9 feels much happier in the gravel and dirt, in my opinion, where it's easier to slide out the back end with intent as you go through the corners, and it's this scenario which also feels much better suited to playing with a gamepad. Honestly, despite how easy Sony, Microsoft and developers have made this generational leap sound, there is the added workload of getting the game onto these next generation consoles. Add to that the general process of running a yearly sports series being more iterative than revolutionary each time round, and there's also the other challenges of 2020 to consider, so it's probably no surprise that WRC9 feels like a more iterative step forward with a focus on content. There is an impressive amount of content to be found under the hood. I've already said there's over 100 stages across the 14 countries and rallies, and KT Games have stated that over 35 of these stages are brand new. In an ideal world, I'm sure that the Rally Portugal and Rally Finland content would have been expanding these to eight stages at launch, but they'll be coming a little bit later. You would be forgiven for not being able to spot what's new and old though, especially when what I've seen on the menus and UI is nigh on identical to WRC 8, right down to the pre-rally intros and the pacing of getting you into an actual stage. I guess you don't want to go and fix what isn't exactly broken. So, to sum it up, there's a lot of great new rallying content coming to WRC9, and there's some intriguing new features that we look forward to seeing in action. But through it all, WRC9 is maybe shaping up to be more of a transitional year for the series, going from this generation to the next generation, taking a bit of caution as they approach a big console jump. That's all for this video, but we will leave you with several more minutes of rallying gameplay. 
WRC 9 is coming out for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on the 3rd of September and then you've got the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X upgrades to look forward to whenever those consoles are released. Make sure to keep an eye out on the sixthaxis.com where we will have our full review of the game as it's available. And make sure to subscribe, like and share before you go, maybe even clicking that bell icon as well. So I'll now leave you with that gameplay and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye! Don't cut open in the 